Hi, this is Daryl Tano of Solutions Reservoir, and welcome to part one of our three-part tutorial, Introduction to Cybersecurity. These videos follow the more thorough material on the website. Pause on slides with yellow backgrounds to review reference material. In learning about cybersecurity, you'll encounter many terms, so let's do some sorting. Terms still in black are general ones, and we'll address them here in part one. We'll cover the blue ones in part two, cybersecurity in the US government, and the red ones in part three, which focuses on the Department of Defense. We begin with this diagram of a notional framework of attack and defense. This is not a formal architecture, but it will serve as a reference as we step through the parts. Here's a yellow background if you want to review it now. Bad actors seek to exploit IT systems. They can be individuals, criminal groups, or even nation states. We'll only be considering external bad actors. A class of bad actors called Advanced Persistent Threats, or APTs, can devote considerable time and expense in pursuit of a very specific target. In general, bad actors seek to place and execute malicious software, malware, that exploits a vulnerability in an information system. Vulnerabilities are flaws in code that enable malware to be installed and executed, typically without an overt sign of its presence. Here's a reference slide about malware, including terms like worms and trojan. Bad actors seek to exploit vulnerabilities that have yet to be repaired or patched in a security update or before other defensive measures have been taken. In particular, bad actors seek to discover new vulnerabilities. The first exploitation of a newly discovered vulnerability for which no patch is available or even under consideration is called a zero-day attack and it is a very dangerous condition for its potential to cause undetected trouble. For example, the heart bleed vulnerability in OpenSSL was undetected for about two years, so only some unknown bad actor is certain of the zero-day attack on it. So how is malware delivered? Well, sometimes it's almost the digital equivalent of this. Common delivery vehicles for malware are email and the web. Malware is often hidden within an email attachment, as are inducements to click an unsafe link. Scattershot inducements are called spam, while a phishing scheme has some focus and spear phishing is extremely focused. For example, if this had been an offer to date native HTML speakers, would Dilbert and Alice really have dismissed it so quickly? APTs do research and develop very targeted messages. For example, the root of a well-publicized breach of a security firm was a superbly targeted spear phishing email with an attachment containing what was then a zero-day exploit of Adobe Flash. On the web, you can encounter malware embedded in downloads and ads or on counterfeit websites. You can even encounter malware without clicking on anything called a drive-by download. Once delivered, malware has to exploit a vulnerability if it's going to be installed, which is called infiltration. While there are many different strains of malware, there are only about 25 vulnerability types. The following reference slide discusses three commonly exploited vulnerability types. And you could read more about them in the National Vulnerability Database. Let's look at malware's process and progression. At a high level, malware has to make it all the way in, infiltration, and then extract the goods, called exfiltration. Malware is usually a small amount of executable code, and simple missions can be contained within the code itself. Malware requiring instructions must establish a command and control channel. A C2 channel may exist only momentarily, so establishing one and avoiding detection involves sophisticated techniques, which are beyond our scope. Upon infiltration, exfiltration can occur immediately or gradually over time. Malware often will delete itself upon completing its mission, 
with victims unaware of the attack. The attack process can follow nominal stages, a breakout called the kill chain by Hutchins and all at Lockheed Martin. You'll see this term, but sometimes with variants of the steps shown. The kill chain suggests points where defenders can thwart the mission. These points of intervention suggest layers of defense called defense in depth. As you may suspect, the cost of thwarting the malware increases left to right along the kill chain. That's malware's side of the story. Now we consider the defense in part 1b.